I'm Eric Benke, and uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to uh, show you my accessible accordion web part uh, today. Um, the web part is available within the PNP samples for you to play around with or to use within your tenant. I'll do a quick summary here. Um, so it allows you to add collapsible accordion sections to a SharePoint page or Teams tab based on list data. Um, it uh, works great for uh, adding FAQs to pages. Um, and I, uh, uh, so I'm a board member of the Portland SharePoint users group, and I originally created it uh, as part of an intro to the SharePoint framework presentation that I did. Um, I got a lot of interest and suggestions from the participants there, and uh, in just a moment, you'll see a demo. When I show you the demo, it'll it's actually going to be based on uh, some uh, how some of them used it uh, within their uh, company's tenant, actually. Um, so real life example there. And it uh, leverages the React Accessible Accordion Library. Um, I chose this for several reasons. For one, um, I just like the way it looked visually. Um, and uh, also, very importantly, accessibility was a high priority for that library. So it works uh, very well with screen readers. Um, and it's easily customizable via CSS. Um, and there's a link to the code at the bottom. All right, so let me jump over to the demo. So, uh, so like I mentioned, for my demo, I'm going to use a real life use case. A major uh, healthcare provider in Portland, uh, in response to the uh, COVID crisis, ramped up their use of Teams a number of months ago, and uh, they use this web part for uh, some of their FAQs to help their employees uh, get up to speed quickly. Um, so what I'm going to show you is uh, similar to what they did, but not identical um, for obvious reasons, but this will give you an idea of, of what they did. Um, and the first thing I'm going to um, show you is the uh, underlying lists that I've set up, because if you're going to use this web part, you need to have your data in a list in order to surface it within the accordion. Um, so here's a Teams FAQ list um, that I created, uh, for instance. And when you create the list, you're going to want to keep the default uh, title column, and then you'll add an additional content uh, column, and it needs to be called content. You can make it a multiple lines of text column and uh, enable enhanced rich text if you want to. Um, and as you can see from, from this view of this list, um, I've used images and hyperlinks in this particular li list. Um, and then I also have another one here, which is the uh, SharePoint FAQ. Um, so now if I go to a page on my site, um, I can add, uh, put it in edit mode, and I can add the web part. Um, and so you can see that I have a placeholder that prompts me to choose a list um, that meets the correct specifications and clicking on this button, or of course you can use a little pencil icon to open up the uh, property pane here. Um, and so I'll give my accordion a title, which will be displayed just above it. So I'll call it Teams FAQ. And then I select the list that I wanna use in the accordion. So in this case, Teams FAQ. And so that adds as that, I'm also going to, um, I can also add additional ones um, to the same page. And so I'll add another one. And in this case, this is going to be my SharePoint FAQ. And I'll select that list. And now that's there as well. Um, so um, it's also very easy to, uh, so let me publish this out. And so there those are on the page. And it's very easy to, uh, to update content um, as well. Like for instance, um, if I want to add a new item to my accordion, I add a new item in my list. Put something in here. So I have a new item there. And now if I go back to, uh, to my page, it's been added um, to my accordion there as well. Likewise, if you delete an item, it'll be removed from the accordion and any edits you made make um, are added very quickly. Um, so um, let's take a look at the code. This is uh, what was built using the React framework. Um, and uh, 
in the interest of time, I'm just going to um, show you my React component file, um, React accordion.tsx, which is where most of the heavy lifting for this web part occurs. At the top, we have our imports, of course. Um, I've highlighted a few here. There's the PMP SP library, which uh, we use for accessing the SharePoint REST API so that we can grab the data from our selected list that we want to populate the accordion with. The PMP placeholder control um, is also used. Um, you saw that already to instruct users to select a list when they initially add the web part. And then, of course, the React accessible library and its components, which provide the UI for our accordion. Uh, moving down into the React accordion class on line 20, uh, we can see our um, constructor method. Um, this is important for setting initial state for the component. Um, so we initialize the state in line 25, and then we invoke the get list items method to populate the items array with the list data that we want to have in state for our accordion React component. And then uh, moving down to line 31 here, there's our get lists item method. Um, where I have a conditional line 32 to make sure that the selected list is not undefined and has an ID that's longer than zero. So that just ensures that we have a legitimate list selected. And then in line 33, that's where we're using the SP library to uh, make our SharePoint REST API call. Um, we're requesting all the items from the list that was chosen in the property pane, but we're selecting for just the title and content field values, um, since that's all we need for populating the accordion with data. Um, then we take those results, line 34, and we're storing um, that we're storing as an array, and then we use the set state method to pass those into our state for the component. Um, so we'll leverage that in just a minute to surface the data via our, our accordion UI. Um, I also wanted to make sure I pointed out on line 46 that uh, I'm using the component did update react lifecycle method, which is a method that gets invoked immediately after updating occurs. Um, so you can see here that the value of my list ID prop changes on my component, uh, if it changes on my component and is no longer the same as the previous list ID value. And then we invoke our get list items method and retrieve the data we need from the items of the newly selected list so that accordion will show data from the newly chosen list instead of the old one. OK, and so now to our render method, um, which is where we provide the output onto the screen. On uh, line 53, um, I'm creating a list selected variable, a Boolean type uh, that's true when list ID is not undefined and has a length greater than zero. Um, and what we're going to display for this div depends on whether the list selected variable is true or false. If it's false because no list has been selected, as you can see in line uh, 56 through 63, that we're going to display the placeholder component that uh, um, prompts the user to select a list. However, um, if list selected is true because a legitimate one has been selected, the placeholder is replaced with an accordion populated with our list data. Um, so let's go through and see how that happens. In line 66, that's pretty straightforward. We're just adding some text above the accordion based on what if anything was entered in the optional accordion title field in the property pane. Um, when I showed you the demo, like my first accordion, I typed in Teams FAQ. And then starting in line 67, we begin to generate the accordion itself. Um, there's a number of components here that are part of the library. And as you can see, they're nested. Um, within each accordion that we create, we're probably going to have more than one item. So that means multiple accordion items. Accordion item here represents a single collapsible section of the accordion and includes a header and a panel. Um, you can see how that's laid out uh, in lines 70 through 79. Uh, so in order to have each item in our SharePoint list represented in its own collapsible section of the accordion, I use the map function as a way to iterate through each of the items within our React accordion state. Um, and you can see that in line 68. And then I feed the value of the title of the particular item, line 73, into the accordion item button component so that it appears in the header of the collapsible section. And then my content field data into the accordion item panel in line 77. Um, so you'll notice um, when I'm handling the content, I'm using the React element dangerously set inner HTML. <laughs> so that's React's equivalent of inner HTML. Uh, it's a little scary looking, but that was intentional on the React developers' parts out of concerns that you might expose your users to a cross-site 
scripting attack if you're not careful. In this case, though, it's not a concern, right? Because we're within the context of SharePoint and we know exactly where this data is coming from. Um, that is, it's coming from the content field of a list item. And the reason I need this instead of just item.content, sort of like I did with the item.title um, value, is to be able to support enhanced rich text within the content field since SharePoint provides that as HTML markup. So I need to treat it as HTML instead of just text. Um, Hugo actually tipped me off to this simple <laughs> approach when I was looking at much more complex ways um, to enable enhanced rich text in the web parts. So I really appreciate his, uh, his guidance and contribution there. Um, so that is it. Thank you. And uh, once again, here's where you can uh, find the code and also how to uh, reach me as well. Fantastic. Very great demo. Thank you, Eric, for doing that today.